Hi everyone, Niall here. Welcome back to the AT20 BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about Revit wall wrapping and how you can use material layer wrapping to turn your walls from the standard presentation where they have no wrapping condition at the inserts or at the wall ends into what I have here in the live project window where you can clearly see the external leaf returning at the inserts for the window and the door as well as a return at the end wall as well from the external to the internal leaf. So let's get into it. Um, as ever, if you like the content, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. It really helps out the channel when you do that. And hit the bell icon as well so you get notified of my next upload if you want to track the progress of the tutorials as they develop. Also to note, if there's any stage of the process that you're familiar with, I've included the timestamps in the description. You can just go down there and click onto the next stage. So I won't delay you any longer. Let's get into it. Step one, creating the wall assembly from scratch. So let's start by creating the wall assembly from scratch so we can understand how we use the material layers to build up the overall wall construction, okay? So in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our architecture tab and press wall, or similarly, we can press the shortcut key WA, and that will bring up the wall drawing tool, okay? Um, just here, I'm going to go and select just a standard wall type, um, something quite basic. I'm just going to pick the wall foundation 300 concrete for, uh, actually I'll pick the external 215 brickwork, okay? And I'm just going to draw a notional length of a wall there, okay? I appreciate that is going up to an 8 meter height. Obviously you're going to be working within the confines of your own project, so you will have it going from a base constraint level to a known offset value or to another level. So now that we've created our initial wall, what we want to do is we want to edit this wall, we want to duplicate it out into another wall type, and then we want to add all the layers of buildup that we want to see in our plan view, okay? So to start, I'm just gonna press edit type here. We're gonna press duplicate, and I'm going to name this wall cavity block work, apologies, cavity. Uh, 375 okay apologies it's very early in the mornings my fingers haven't warmed up yet so I'm gonna press okay and then we're in the type properties now for our newly duplicated wall cavity block work wall 375 mil thick okay so under the construction header in parameter you'll see that we have the edit dialog here beside structure okay and when you press the edit this brings you into the wall assembly window and the wall assembly is where you add the layers of construction buildup that you want to see in your wall. So for our 375 mil thick buildup, we actually want to introduce a grand total of seven layers altogether, okay? So to start, let's introduce the layers straight off the bat. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that should give us a total count of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Now. Not to confuse things, you can see that we actually have all of these layers present in what's called the core boundary, okay? And what we want to do is we want to move these layers around so they represent the correct position within the wall. So you can see at the top here, we have something denoting this area called exterior side, and at the bottom we have interior side. And what this is telling us is that the walls, the, the layers of the assembly buildup closest to the bottom represent the interior and you work from the interior through to the exterior as you go up the list, okay? So what we want to do is we want to keep A, our initial layer. I'm going to keep this in our core boundary. You can see on item nine and item one, we have a core boundary here. I'm just going to expand this a little bit. And I want to set this to a block work wall, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is in here, I'm going to go into the material breakdown and I'm gonna just press block. And I'm gonna select concrete, masonry units or CMU units, okay? And I'm gonna press okay. And I'm gonna set that thickness to 100 mil to represent an internal leaf construction, okay? Now, so we've created one layer of our core boundary. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the objects above this, and I know that I want an internal finish layer of a skim plaster coat on our concrete masonry units, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
move this down and down. And the idea is that this is going to be a representative plaster layer that's probably going to encompass both the board and the skin together. You can do both as individual layers. I prefer in this instance to do them the same. So down here, I'm going to select plaster. And you'll get gypsum wallboard, plaster or render. So I'm just going to select here. And at the bottom, I'm going to give this a total finish of 12.5 millimeters. Okay. To represent our plaster skim coat and our board internally, as well as a dablet. So that might be thicker, that might be thinner, but we're just going to leave it at this for the moment. As a default at the moment, I'm going to leave all the wrap conditions off because I want to explain them in more detail afterwards. Everything above item seven here, I want to be on the opposite side of the core boundary. I want them to be de designated as from here down to here. I want these all to be con considered finished layers outside of the core boundary. So the first thing I'm going to do is using the move up and down buttons here. I'm just going to move that one up, 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 and up. So you can see I've got one item on the core boundary, which is our concrete masonry units that are 100 mil thick. They're designated as a structural material. And now I have all of these elements here outside of that. I'm going to change these now, and I want you to follow the same conditions to create the same wall type as I am. Okay, so the first thing here I'm going to select is finish one, brackets four. Okay, apologies, I actually want to go for finish five. No, I'm going to go for finish one, apologies, sorry, getting mixed up here. And I'm just going to put in a render, base smooth, and press OK. And for our thickness here, I'm going to use 22 mil. And again, this is a notional thickness. You can change this according to where you are and what your typical construction is. I am now here going to select, apologies, substrate two. But rather confusingly, I'm actually going to pick the same concrete masonry units as I did previously. And I'm going to give them 100 mil to represent the outer leaf of the construction, okay? I'm going to explain to you why I'm not including the outer leaf and the inner leaf both within the core boundary a little bit later on in the video, so bear with me for the moment, okay? After that, we're going to go to thermal air layer. So, thermal air layer, item three. And I'm going to select air, which oddly enough is a material in Revit. And what's great about this is we can actually give it a notional thickness. So I'm going to give it 40 mil, and this is going to act as an air boundary, basically, um, a barrier to prevent moisture penetration through the entire cavity wall buildup. After the air layer, we're going to pick thermal air again, and I'm going to pick rigid insulation. Okay, and I'm going to set that to 100 mil. Okay. And you can see here, actually, we've got one that's maybe surplus to requirements. So in some instances, you may want this location here to be a membrane. Um, in some cases, you might want the inside face of the external leaf to be the membrane. To avoid any confusion, I'm actually going to delete this for this exercise because it's not going to um, inform anything. Okay. So you can see that on our core boundary designator, we have layers wrap above wrap and layers below wrap and there's no wrap condition that's can be activated for the core boundary that's because typically the core boundary is acting as a structural element and it will automatically give the first preference of the join with any adjacent walls or any intersecting walls it will automatically give the first join condition priority to the areas within the core boundary Okay, so after that, as a default, as I said, we're going to leave all the wrap conditions off. Okay, and we're going to press OK. Now you can say we have a layer three problem here, and it says function priorities cannot ascend from the core boundary to the finish face. Now this is an intentional thing that I'm after doing here, and the reason why is because the substrate layer and the structure one and the structure one down here they often don't get considered as um, a finishes material. Apologies, not the substrate layer, just the structure one. That's often not considered a finish material, obviously, because it's designated as structure. So I actually forgotten to change that. 
So we're going to set that to finish to, and I'm going to press OK. And we're saying we still have the layer priority kind of sent from the core boundary to finish face. So up here, I'm also going to set my block work to finish one. Okay. I'm pressing OK, you can see that error goes. And that's because the core boundary is trying to have everything that's deemed a hostable or a structural um, item within its core boundary. I'm going to explain more about these material functions now in a moment. So we've built, created our initial wall build up and I'm going to press OK. And you're going to see that the entire construction of our wall changes. So we have our inside leaf here, our external leaf here, our external render, our air layer that's 40 mil and our insulation there. I'm also going to change this down to about 1 to 25 so we get a different density. Now apologies, if you're using in a project template, hopefully your hatch patterns are going to be a lot more presentable than what you're seeing here, because uh, I'm just using the default construction template for this exercise. So, when you are finished with your wall assembly construction, okay, you have to make sure that your level of detail here is set to fine. If you go to course, you're not going to actually see your build up, okay? So, if you've made your full assembly and you're still seeing a solid wall, like a, like a poche hatch like this, it's because you don't have your level of detail high enough. You can set it to medium or you can set it to fine. And in both instances, it'll show. Now that we've finished our wall, okay, we can go on to starting to understand the material layer function priorities in Revit. The one thing I would say is if you are working to real world setting out and you want to make sure that you are using your walls in an intelligent manner when you're placing them so that they fit within a block interval or a half block interval or a brick interval. I actually have a full tutorial based on that that I will link in the iCard here now or in the description below. It's actually a very useful tutorial and it gets you thinking from the block layers perspective so that you can place your CMU units um, within the actual intervals intelligently and make sure that all of your hosted elements meet those intervals as well. There's a couple of tips and tricks in that that most people would not have seen, so I highly recommend that video, actually. So that's step one, which was creating the entire wall assembly from scratch. I'm going to move on to step two now, which is understanding the material function priorities in Revit. Okay, guys, so step two, understanding material layer function priorities in Revit. An often misstep when assigning the wall material properties in Revit is the absence of an understanding of the hierarchy or the priorities of the material layer functions within the assembly itself. Revit by default has an inbuilt priority list for the layer functions, which follows the format I'm going to dictate to you now. Okay? What it really is, is the smaller the number, the higher the, higher the join and wrapping priority it gets. Okay? This is all a little bit confusing, but I'm going to go back into the assembly and show you what I mean. So, when we go back into the assembly, you can see that we have the layer functions all um, designated here, okay? And the priorities are actually the numbers associated to the side of the layer functions within the little um, square brackets. So, for example, we have structure one. Structure one are the structural elements that can carry the primary loads of the building. They're typically associated to the core boundary only. And these insist, these include kind of blockwork walls, concrete panels, precast or in situ concrete elements, that kind of thing. Okay, anything that basically takes the load of the building should fall within the core boundary and should probably be assigned to the structure one. Okay, the reason for this cavity wall that the structure one is deemed the inside leaf and this, the second outer leaf isn't deemed part of the structure but part of the finish is because the reality is the wall plate will actually sit in alignment with the internal leaf to host a roof. So this actually makes more intuitive sense as you rise up through the building. On substrate two, so let's say if we change this to substrate two, substrate two basically is generally a support structure that is not the primary support, but supports other materials instead. A good example of this are kind of like backing boards, shadow boards, plywood host boards for building services hosting, that kind of thing. Okay. Thermal air layer, number three. This is the thermal insulation, such as rigid aero board, fiberglass, bath, or similar. And it also includes, as I have designated down below, um, intentional air barriers, such as a nominal air allowance within the external cavity construction. 
basically to act as a, a boundary between the internal and the external leaf so moisture cannot penetrate through in lieu of um, membranes. Finally, we have, I'm just going to move this back to the finish one. We have finish one with the brackets four. So this is the fourth priority in the list. And this is typically assigned to external finishes such as sand cement renders, stone tile installations, stone cladding, and that kind of thing. So try think of finish one as the external finishes build up. Okay. There is a little asterisk to go on alongside that. It's not always the case. Finish two which is priority number five and is the lowest priority item on the um, layer functions, is typically assigned to internal finishes such as plaster skims, wall tiling, etc. Alternatively though, this is where the asterisk comes into place for finish one. This can be assigned to the outermost finish on multiple layers of finishes, such as an internal skim coat on plasterboard, on dabs, on the blockwork wall. So you might want to wish you might wish to designate the dabs layer and the plasterboard as finish one, and then finish two would be the outer skim as well. So that's a variation where you might have finish one migrate to the internal, um, the interior of the building. Okay. So now that we've understood the breakdown of the layer functions, we can meaningfully start getting into setting up air wrapping. The one thing I just want to note is that the material function priorities work in combination with the core boundary. So the core boundary gets the first preference no matter what the material is within it because it's acting as the core of the wall. And Revit will make sure that the join for anything, let's say we had a wall come off the end here, it will always prioritize the joining of, in this instance, the concrete masonry units for the internal leaf as the first join and any of the wraps that are assigned outside of that will have to make way for the wrapping and joining of the internal core boundary, first and foremost, okay? So once the cores are joined, Revit will then go through the process of assigning the material priority for wrapping and joining with, with walls adjacent via the layer finishes. So I know that can be a little bit confusing, but we're gonna put it into practice now and we'll see how this all plays out. So I'm going to press OK. So step number three, applying material layer wrapping. So as you can see, we just have our wall in place here now, and we actually don't have anything that is hosted in the wall for us to look at our insert wraps either. So the first thing we're going to press is DOR, and it's going to bring up our doors. And I already have the double doors loaded here, so I'm just going to place a double door. And then I'm going to press shortcut keys WN to bring up a window that I previously loaded, and I'm just going to place that as well. So now you can see that we actually have our inserts in the wall. And what we need to do is make sure that our wall properties here start including the wrap conditions at the end of the wall and at the inserts so that we can create, we can close off our, our cavity basically. Okay, so I'm just going to move this slightly more centrally. So selecting the wall, going back into our edit type properties and under the construction heading parameter, we're going to go into the edit dialog under structure to bring us back into our edit assembly. And what we want to do is we want to assign the following wraps to our buildup. Okay, so on our finish one, render beige smooth here, I'm going to set this to wraps. Okay, because we want our finish to wrap around externally here and cut back until it meets the window jam for the inserts. So yes, we would also like the render to go around the back of the wall at the end. So yes, we're going to select this as wraps. We're also going to make sure that our finish one for our concrete masonry units, which are the external block work, wraps as well, so that they will actually close off the cavity at both the inserts and the ends. We're not going to set our thermal air layer, um, our air and our rigid insulation. That is going to remain as not wraps, but we're all going to circle back to our interior finish here because much like the exterior finish, we would like the interior plaster finish to skim back in towards, well, basically to, to follow the reveal back into the window, okay? So we're gonna select that to wraps as well. So now that we've assigned which materials that we want to wrap in the dialogue here, we actually need to set the default wrapping conditions. So at inserts, you can see this says, does do not wrap. What we want to do is tell us that we want either the exterior, aka these elements up here, to wrap only 
the interior, aka these elements, the internal plaster skim, only to wrap, or both. So I want the interior and exterior finishes all to wrap towards my inserts. So I'm going to press both. And at ends, it's going to prompt exterior or interior only. In this instance, we want the exterior to return. So I'm going to press exterior and I'm going to press OK. So we've set our wrapping conditions and watch what happens at our inserts and at our ends at the end wall here. You can see now that we have a return in place. For the end of our wall, going the full length of the wall, but there's something odd happening at our inserts. And you can see that at our inserts, we have a situation where the exterior leaf is not returning all the way in to butt the interior leaf the way it would need to to close off the cavity. So, what actually drives this is not the wall itself, but the hosted elements within the wall. And what I want to do is go into detail about how we can edit the properties of both the window and the doors to control the presentation of the wall wrapping at these inserts. So because I've used some of the default families that are included in, in this instance, the UK metric template, you might have the US metric or the US imperial or wherever you're from. Okay. So when I select this and go into the edit type in the window dialog, you will see a couple of things of note that are going to drive all these conditions. So the first thing I'm going to show you is under graphics, we have visibility cavity closers. So the window family by default shows a small icon to represent a cavity closer. So if you are not actually setting out a closer with a wall wrap such as this, but you want the installation to run tight up to the window and then you want the window to create an actual closer in its own right, different type of detail, and um, probably a more recommended detail nowadays, to be honest with you. Then what you can do is you can actually change the cavity closer width and the cavity closer depth and press apply. And you can see that we can make these wholesale changes. Most importantly, we can also turn off the visibility of the cavity closer for the window and press apply. And you can see the visibility of the window cavity closer is now gone. Something else I want to highlight to you is under the construction heading here, we actually have wrap layers exterior from exterior and wrap layers interior from exterior. So these are actually the values that drive the wrapping condition of this element at the inserts. So when the wall is returning, this location here is following a rule outline from one of these values. And I can tell you now, that because we're going from exterior to interior wrapping, all right, in this location, we want to set our wrap layers interior from exterior, okay? It's a little bit confusing. What you need to do is actually toy with it until you get familiar with it, okay? But if I press OK here, and I was to draw a small little line from, it's not gonna snap to this now, it's worth noting, to here, you can see that value there is 177.5, okay? Going back into the window family. Oh, sorry, apologies. Going back into the window, pressing edit type, you can see our wrap layers interior from exterior is 177.5. So what we want this value to be is the total thickness of our internal leaf and our internal finish. So I'm gonna set that to 112.5. I'm going to press OK, I'm going to press Apply, and you're going to see the wrap returns to join. The final thing I'm going to note is that we actually have the exterior from exterior at 102.5, and I believe that this is actually the condition that's stopping this plasterboard returning all the way here. So I'm going to set that to be the same. And you can see that our internal plaster work has returned that far. Now, the reality of the situation here is a little bit different because what we would have in this instance is our cavity closer would be the width of our external buildup here, approximately, I think it's 22, if I remember correctly. And then these two would have put that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, I'm going to press edit and go and turn back on the cavity closer visibility for its 
thickness down here in the dimensions, I'm going to set it to 22.5 and the cavity closer offset from exterior, I'm going to say 112.5. I'm going to press apply and there might be a bit of jigging. So I've actually set this the incorrect way. I actually need to set this as 22.5 and what I need is the frame depth of 65 to be the cavity closer. So I'm going to press 65 now. I'm going to press OK. And you can see now that the location is a little bit confused. So what we need to do is we need to actually figure out the value that this moves down to. So I want this to move down in alignment with this element here. Okay. So I'm going to press OK quickly. I'm just going to take a quick dimension as a sanity check. That's 83. So I'm going to go back in and change that value of 65 to 83. And press apply and then we're going to change the offset from exterior value to 50 initially and you can see that that's after snapping right to that point okay the good thing about this now is we can actually go back up to our layer wrapping interior from exterior and i can set that as 50 okay and i can set this as 50. um i might not be able to set that as 50 actually ignore that apologies I can set the bottom one as 50, and this one I have to set as 50 plus 83, so that's 133. And now you can see that our finish is stopping at the cavity closer on both sides. The one issue I have with this is that there's no clear way of closing the interior block work all the way across and stop starting the finish as you want, okay? Um, no matter what way I've toyed with these settings, I've always had to have the finish and the block work basically wrap the same value. It's that simple. So I press OK here. That doesn't look right either. So I would rather roll back those changes into this. And then I would use detail items when I'm using a detailed plan view or let's say I want to blow up in this area, I would draft in my closer requirements here. So at least the block work is looking consistent and correct. Okay. So now we need to just go and do the same process here on the door very quickly. I'm not going to go as long winded as we did in the window to explore all the options. I'm just going to select the door, go into the edit type. I'm going to turn off the visibility of the cavity closers here. I'm going to set the internal layer rocking to 112.5 and I'm going to set the external distance to 112.5 press apply okay and you'll see that our wrapping conditions meet the same for the door insert as they do in the window insert so now we've created our full wall wrapping conditions as described at the start of the video there may be one consideration that you have to make that you're unaware of okay and that is if you go into a family that does not have the parameters to control the cavity closure, okay? So what I'm gonna do is very quickly give you an overview of those parameters, because this video is getting very long at this point, so that you can understand what might be involved. And if you take down, let's say, a family from some site and it doesn't have the closure parameters introduced for a window or a door, you can introduce them very easily. So going into our, I'll go into the window because it's a more basic family. I'm gonna go into edit type on the window. And under the views, I'm gonna to go to floor plans, reference level. You can see a lot of data straight away, but the one thing I want to highlight to you is those two construction layer wraps from the edit type you can see here. Wrap layers interior from exterior 112.5 as I've assigned it, okay? So the way to control the wrapping condition for your windows is that when you select, you can either place a reference plane or you select an existing reference plane and you assign this dimension parameter to it. So when I select this, you will notice that this reference plane has a wall closure turned on property. So this is a parameter that is turned on for the wall closure. And that's telling Revit that this is going to control the wrapping condition for the wall, for closing, for closing the wall at the inserts. And then what you need to do is add your dimension parameters for wrap exterior from exterior and wrap interior from exterior. I would relabel them to something a little bit more intuitive and give them a notional value so that when you apply the dimensions, you can assign the label 
and then you can save your family load it in and you will then be able to do the wrap conditions at the inserts that I have went through previously in detail so guys I think that about covers everything I think um, if you would like to know more about this process in particular and how we can create the full parameters associated to the, the, the wall wrapping layers within the window and the door families, please let me know in the comments. I'll go through that in detail if that's something that someone really needs a descriptor on, but it is actually quite a quick process. You introduce your reference plane, you turn on the wall closer parameter, that is default in most window families, and then you merely add your two dimension parameters and assign the label to the dimensions after you've placed them. So, I hope you all found this useful. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, please make sure to check out this corresponding blog post for this over at 820bin.com. If you prefer a more linear and structured, you know, um, element by element breakdown of this process, so you can just reference back to it in text format rather than trying to find the place in the video again. As ever, this is Niall with 8020BIM. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you for the next time. Take care. Bye-bye.